Hey guys, what's up? So today I'm gonna to be doing a reacts video. I've never done one of these before, so be kind as far as the editing goes. But today we're pulling back the curtain on private aviation when it comes to should you charter your jet? Check it out. All right, so as some of you may be aware, there's another YouTuber out there, uh, Fabrizio Poli. He's uh, at BizJet TV, one of the like OGs. And I really appreciate his channel. When I was first starting out as a broker, I watched him a lot to try to find out more about private aviation. And you know his content just keeps coming. He is a machine when it comes to content. He's got great content. He's got great experience. He himself is a pilot. He's been involved in aircraft management and charter broking and just so many things. And and in so many ways, I look up to him. I know that uh, you know me coming onto the YouTube scene, you know, may have been a little bit of a of a surprise to some people because you know I didn't have the aviation background that a lot of these YouTubers like Fabrizio, uh, like Steve, and others have. You know, I was a youth pastor for ten years, and so I'm going to be giving my reacts to his most recent video because he talks about should you charter your jet, should you buy a jet and give it to a charter company? Like, does that make sense? Uh, because in a lot of ways, it's probably not a good idea. Wow. In a lot of ways, it's probably not a good idea. And I want to have him give like the bad side of it. And then I'll respond about what the positive might be so that you can make an informed decision by hearing uh, multiple sides. So with that in mind, let's bring up Fabrizio Poli from BizJet TV. So I often get asked this question, shall I charter my jet out when I'm not using it? That's, everybody seems to think that they're going to make money when they charter their jet out. There's a few videos on YouTube that talk about this and even some owners, you know, saying that, you know, they make money by chartering their jet out. Uh, and some of these people that have said that uh, actually discovered that that's not the case. But I'm going to start off by telling you a story and I'll tell you the story in a minute. My name is Fabio Tripoli. I'm your aviation advisor and also airline transport pilot and the author of The Quantum Economy. More about my book towards the end of the video. I'll be giving you a special offer to stay to the end. So let me tell you this horror story. Before he gets into the horror story, I just wanted to share. Um, I will tell you that as far as the YouTube channels go, like my most popular videos are the videos that I have that talk about should you private should you charter your private jet? Can you make money uh, by by chartering your private jet? So he's absolutely right that there's a couple videos out there because a bunch of them are mine. Uh, these two owners, uh, one guy goes out, he buys two airplanes. And then he tells his buddy about, I just bought these two planes instead of paying the taxes. I just bought the planes. I can write off the 100% of the depreciation. And so he bought two jets. His buddy goes out and buys two jets. How did they buy the jets? Uh, they hunted around and on the internet, found somebody. And uh, this somebody said to them, yes, no problem. Um, well, you buy a Falcon 50. You buy a Challenger 604. Uh, we'll buy these other two smaller jets as well. Um, and so these guys went out, purchased the jets. And this guy now, I will say it doesn't sound like when these guys went to go buy a private jet, they were working with a broker. And if they were working with a broker, I think that's a really important thing to, to keep in mind. What kind of broker are you working with? Are you working with someone that just wants to sell you something? And you'll see why they, whoever they worked with wanted to sell them this jet in, in a minute in the story. But one of the most important things to notice here is were you working with a trusted authority? Not just a trusted advisor, someone that you know could advise you, but an authority, someone that had, you know, the wherewithal and the experience and the knowledge to actually inform you while you're making a decision. It doesn't sound like that's the case here. And so if that's not the case, well, maybe you can buy a private jet and put it on a charter if you're working with someone that knows what they're doing. I said, I'll charter them out when you're not using them. And you know, the charters will pay for all your flying. Oh, great. Okay, so it's tax write-off plane pays for itself. It's not going to cost me anything. And I've got my own jet. If I need it to go somewhere, I can travel with my family or with business executives and, and use it to go out and do deals. Now that's important. He mentioned a bunch of things, you know, tax write off. I can use it whenever I want. Uh, it, pay, it pays for itself. That's not all true. Yes, it can be a tax write off. That's that part is true. Can you use it whenever you want? No. And, and somebody should be telling you that you if you put it on charter, you're not going to be able to use it whenever you want. And that's one of the reasons why Fab will later say you shouldn't do it. And I would agree with him. You don't buy a jet 
and put it on a charge certificate so that you can use it whenever you want because you will not be able to use it whenever you want. You need to think of this thing like a business tool. It's out of use. You only get to use it once in a while if you're lucky and if you can if you have good organization skills so that you can schedule yourself ahead, but it's not, you, you can't use it whenever you want. And when it, when you say it pays for itself, well, that can mean a lot of different things depending on the business model that you're working with uh, when it comes to a charter broker. So, you know, there's three stages to a jet paying for itself. Stage one is it offsets your fixed costs. It covers your fixed costs. Um, the stage two would be you get to fly for free because it's making so much money and has so much demand that when you want to fly it, if you can use it, the excess revenue is going to your, to, to your, to your credit so you can fly. And then thirdly, they actually cut you a check and this is really hard to do. So uh, just to be clear, I agree with the title and the premise of his video. You probably shouldn't put your jet on, on a charter operation, but there are ways to do it and there are ways to be successful at it. That's where I have a little bit of a reaction if you will to to fab's video so let's keep going let's hear how the story goes so this is basically you know how they were sold the deal but what happened the falcon 50 went out and uh, it was on a charter uh, this airplane was based more or less in the west coast united oh. the east coast somewhere and the plane broke down and it sat there for almost six weeks before it was fixed now what the owner hadn't been told is a falcon 50 being an old airplane uh, that the show doesn't really like to support their older aeroplanes. The spare parts are difficult to find. So you have to wait when things go wrong, et cetera, et cetera. No, this was, he wasn't told this. So now he gets this. Okay. So Fab is pointing out, he wasn't told this. If you're working with a good broker with good relationships with charter operators, or you're working with good charter operators, they should be telling you this. They should be telling you, Hey, look, this is a mobile asset. This thing breaks. If this thing breaks, you don't get any money. Like you only get money if this thing works. So if it breaks, that's a problem. And by the way, this is an older aircraft. So we may not have parts availability like we would on a newer one. This is why you can get into buying a jet for two, three, four million dollars and put it in a charter and have the opportunity to maybe make some money because it's old. If you wanted to do this on a, a more reliable scale, then yes, you're going to be shelling out like $10 million. But some people that are looking to do this, they don't want to tie up $10 million into an asset that could break that might not make the money. So they go with the two to four or $5 million jets. And yes, they're going to have problems, but you should be aware of these problems moving into it because you're working with a reputable charter operator. It sounds like the problem in this story is not the business model of trying to offset costs and generate revenue through charter. It sounds like the problem is that you weren't working with they weren't working with someone that they could trust uh to tell them uh the information that they need to know so they can make an informed decision unscheduled maintenance event okay which costs him extra money which wasn't on the spreadsheet the airplane's sitting on the ground for six weeks so it's not doing any charters okay so he's missed revenue on that um so that was a really really bad choice the other guy bought this airplane this challenger 604 for seven million after a while, discovered that the guy that sold him the plane bought it for 6.25 three weeks before and sold it to him for seven million. And then the first charter came in after nine months. Okay, so this this is I love that he brings up this point because unfortunately, this is the dark side of private aviation. So a guy sold him a jet for six million that he himself had purchased at six million. He sold it to the client for seven million. So while there's nothing inherently like illegal about that, it's just shady business. It's not a good way to do business by you buying an aircraft and then marketing up a million dollars to send it to your client. Oh, and by the way, when he got it, it took him nine months to actually get uh, a charter revenue. Now that could be for a variety of reasons. I'll go into that in a second, but yeah, there's a dark side to aviation where you, you should be working with a broker or a manager or an operator that's transparent with regards to the prices. They should be telling you, Hey, these things are roughly on the market for $7 million. And if one just happens to pop up, you know, at a good price, like you can ask, ask what the backstory is, you know, are, are you buying this or is somebody, you know, buying this and are they like, when I talk with people, like most people don't have a problem with someone buying a jet, fixing it up and flipping it to them. Most people don't have a problem. They just want to know, like, are they not getting screwed? Right. Because it becomes a, if, if you're marketing it up a million dollars, chances are this is now becoming a safety issue that you got it for a million dollars cheaper. That's not just because somebody died and they're liquidating the estate. That's there's probably a story behind this aircraft and it may not be safe. So 
the fact that you're marketing up a million dollars, I mean, that's that could be shady. It could be totally legit. I don't know. But yes, Fab is absolutely right. Like you got to be careful when you're buying jets that it's you're not getting marked up. You're not getting screwed. But that's not a knock against the business model of charter. That's a knock against, again, who you were dealing with. So. Oh, and also he talks about it, the fact that it took nine months to get on charter. That could be for a variety of, re variety of reasons. It may not have been a charter bird before. And so they had to do what's called conformity. They had to make, you know, put it up to, um, they had to put it up so that they had to fix up the maintenance. They had to do the aesthetics. They had to get the log books in order. They had to prove to the FAA that this was a safe aircraft. So they had to do stuff to make sure that it would be approved to be a charter bird. So that that takes time. That usually takes a couple of weeks, a couple of months. Uh, so it might not have been 135 ready. And even if it was 135 ready, it takes time to do all the paperwork. So now nine months is kind of a long time. So maybe this, maybe they were putting it into a brand new charter company that didn't have the demand versus a, a reputable operator that's already been in business and has been doing uh, uh, challengers before. Maybe they were doing, you know, small little pistons. There's just a lot that could be going on in this story that doesn't necessarily speak against this idea of buying a jet and putting on charter. It just speaks more against like, Hey, know what you're getting yourself into. And that's what I'm hoping to, to share He's with obviously you guys. Not very video. Happy either. So what happens with these private jets? Now you are going to be buying a private jet and the management companies are going to do fall over backwards to get you to give them uh, your airplane to manage because they're going to make 15%. It doesn't cost them, the management company, a penny. Actually, it makes them really look good because now you're, you're, you're coming in there with your Gulfstream G550. They're adding another airplane to their fleet. They put it on their website, this nice shiny jet, and they tell everybody we have another Gulfstream G550 under management, you know, a $40, $50 million asset uh, under management, and it makes them look really good. You pay for everything and you pay the management fee. So you pay them like 12 grand a month to manage the airplane, and the management company would also make 15% on every charter. So that's why they're falling over backwards. And that's why they're telling you all these fancy stories to lure you in. But the re reality is uh, no finish. one has ever made any money chartering. Okay. That's right. He goes into that whole thing. So, all right, let's talk about this. Charter companies falling, you know, head over heel to get you to buy a jet to put it on their certificate. Um, I understand where he's coming from. Yes, a lot of shady operators when they're start, start, starting, a lot of operators, if, especially if they're just getting started, like they might not have the capital to afford a jet, or maybe they have some jets and they want some new jets, but they don't have the capital. Listen, this is a business, right? And so if you're a business owner and you have an opportunity to, to take an asset under management without putting out the capital of two, three, four million dollars because your margins are, are, are small, Right. And you're just being responsible with your margins. You're not just throwing capital out there to buy assets. If this is a win win, like, why wouldn't you? And, and I guess what I'm saying is all the operators that I work with, when we're pitching this idea to somebody, we show you the numbers. And so if you're working with an operator and you're thinking about doing this, the operator should provi provide you with the numbers. So if you're looking at a Falcon 50, you should go with an operator that owns Falcon 50s, that has access to Falcon 50 training, Falcon 50 parts, Falcon 50 resources, and they can show you the numbers of the past two, three, four years. Hey, here are the numbers of what we've done in the past. And so if you understand that, what you know what you're working with now you now this is not just people throwing fancy stories at you this is this is my business here are the numbers if you buy the asset here's where you're going to make money right because the, the the these um these reports that you're shown when you're thinking about this it's Here's the here's how much it costs the direct operating costs. Here's how much it costs to operate the aircraft. Here's how much the fixed costs are: the hangar, the pilot, the insurance, all this kind of stuff, right? Okay. If you fly it 400 hours and we charge X, we get this much revenue. Okay. From here, we take our cut. Now you gotta now you gotta subtract the the direct operating costs. Now you gotta subtract the fixed costs. Here's what you're left with. So you will know if you fly 400 hours, this is the expectation. Now. Sometimes it's a negative expectation. Okay, well, then you know the only reason you're buying this asset is for the tax write-off, and then you're just going to let somebody else handle it 
uh, to offset your to offset the the fixed cost because you will have fixed costs, you will have hangar costs, pilot costs, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so that'll be minimized, uh, and you keep it stretched out a little bit. You can even set a limitation if you want to the charter company and say, "Listen, I don't want it to go more than two hundred hours a year." That just keeps it moving, right? So that you're not buying an asset and then parking it and it becomes a paperweight and it's hard to resell. So you'll have these numbers and. Yes, you're absolutely right. If something breaks and it can't reach 400 hours uh, for the year, then the numbers get impacted. Or guess what? There's a demand for a charter and the demand goes up and now it has to go out 500 hours. Well, guess what? You're making more money. There's more revenue there. So it goes both ways. And my point being is that you should be talking with an operator. They should be presenting you with things that are important when it comes to uh, the numbers. So we're not just telling fanciful stories or showing you the numbers. And if you have a hard time with this, like that's why you get a broker involved to be a third party so that they can kind of translate things that are going on. So you don't feel like you're being um, taken advantage of by the operators because you know you don't know what you don't know. So let's see what else he says. So nobody's, according to Fabrizio, no one's ever made uh, any money on a charter. You know, I kind of see where he's going with this. I don't think it's true. I've seen the numbers. I've worked with operators. I've worked with owners. It's not true. But let's 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 hear how he how he phrases it. Because it might be right. The jet out. Just to give you a, a, a bit of perspective here, the airlines have to use their airplanes for at least minimum four thousand hours a year to be able to break even. And in the history of airlines, there's very very few that have actually made a profit. Bearing in mind the first flight was in 1903. Here we are today in 2024, and that's a reality. Just, you know, look at the history of airlines and you'll find that out. Okay, so I'm not I'm not a statistician. I'm not going to go and like look at this stat and that he's throwing out. I'm going to take it at face value. If airlines never make any money, why would anybody own or work for an airline? They, they wouldn't. Not, nobody loves aviation that much that they're going to put up with cranky passengers, broken old planes, and constantly changing federal regulations and technology if they don't make money. Okay? So when it comes to charter, listen, I tell people this all the time. If you want to buy a jet and put it on a charter, this is not the vehicle to change your family tree with, with generational wealth. Okay, go buy real estate, go buy uh, crypto if you want to dabble there, NFTs, I don't care what, go find another vehicle to park, buy a business, park your money, build real assets, build a portfolio, off you go, great, okay? Aviation is a game that you can play that if you want to own a jet for the tax write-offs, maybe we can, maybe we can, maybe we should buy and charter. If you're only going to use the aircraft 50, 100, 150 hours a year, maybe we should talk about charter because now that you're only using it 50 hours a year, and if you can schedule that out, then we can use it the rest of the time for a charter and offset your cost. This isn't a play to offset cost. Now, sometimes it'll offset your cost by 100% so that you don't have to pay for hangar and stuff like that. Um, sometimes it'll only offset it a little bit and you have a big maintenance event and you're still paying them. You're paying them the management, you're paying them the, the maintenance bill. You know, the engine blows up. There's fifth, there's $500,000, half a million. You got, you got to write that check, but you know what you're getting into. Like you're responsible for the, for the maintenance. And hopefully the charter operator, uh, brings in the revenue because they're, they have a, they're, they're intimately tied to your success. If your plane doesn't work, they can't make money. And so this is, I always tell people, this is a business relationship. When you're looking for a charter operator, this is not like just a, a business. Um, uh, this is not just something that you do, you know, as a business model, but you're forming a business partnership with the operator. So get to know the operator, ask the right questions from the operator so that you feel comfortable. This takes this takes months to kind of like put this into perspective. You don't just go buy a jet and throw it on a certificate because the broker knows a buddy like that would just be shady. So um, there's, there's all this that kind of goes into it that I think we're getting glossed over and I get it. You know, people should be weary of doing this. And I think Fabrizio is doing a great job of making that people aware of that, but there's more to the conversation and fortune favors the bold. And if you're bold, then you might have a shot here of offsetting your cost. And then level two, maybe you fly for free or level three, you know, you, you get a check. And people saw this the past couple of years uh, in, in, in charter operations. The demand is slowing down now. 
So the demand's not there. Uh, buying an aircraft, you might get a better deal now. Um, but these are all things that you kind of take into consideration. So let's see where else he's going to go with this. So um, why on earth come and buy a private jet then? Well, the private jet, the advantage is it's a business tool. And this is what you really need to understand. In my book, The Quantum Economy, you know, I talk about those people that are in the quantum economy. And one of these is the company Walmart. So, so I will recommend the book. I've checked out the book. You know, you can definitely check it out. I also wrote a book. Um, but no, his book is really good because it, it gives really, uh, it gives, uh, whatchamacallit, specific examples of successful business people using their jet as a business tool. And that's pretty much what he's, what he's going into here. And, and what's kind of interesting, I'm going to skip a little bit ahead because uh, I've seen this, but he goes into the story of like, the jet not being available and i'll talk to you uh, let's see what he has to say here but i definitely recommend the book check it out well i could actually use my airplane to go and scout for locations for walmart so that's what he initially did um and then he started to build a fleet of aircraft and then they started to use the airplane to once they had a few locations to take their people to the different locations to visit yeah. and see how the business was going so go walmart for and buying over jets. time they, they use the airplanes to do this and to grow their business, they use the airplanes as a business tool to the extent where now they have one of the largest corporate fleets of private jets in the world. They have 30 aircraft and the company keeps growing. So uh, because they're using it as a business tool. And so mm -hmm. the way you need to look at it, 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 and this is really, really important to understand, because if you're chartering your airplane, now, I'll just give you an example. Okay, Let's say you're based in, in Los Angeles and uh, you charter request comes in. The charter company will call you and say, okay, we've got a charter request here uh, on Monday morning. Plane's going out from Los Angeles to London in England, and it's going to sit there for a couple of days and then fly back. Yeah, okay. So they get owner approval, okay, and off the plane goes because it's a lot of hours. So you think, oh, I'm going to make money. Charter guys are all happy because they're oh, this is a, this is a good money out of this one. <laughs> Plenty of hours flying them, you know, 30 hours, 15 there, 15 back, whatever, give or take. Uh, and uh, so anyway, so... Th that's what they're thinking now suddenly on monday afternoon a situation starts developing where you really need to be in philadelphia the next morning but your plane's in london so now what do you do you call the charter company up see if they have uh, an extra airplane no they don't so now you're going to have to go out and charter someone else's airplane down the road and pay in full for that charter so and it's not your airplane so he, I, we're going to talk a little bit more about what he goes into and what his kind of recommendation is here. But um, that's absolutely possible. When you put your when you put your jet on a charter certificate, you want it to make money. Like that's what they're going to do. They're going to book it for trips for other people. Now he said something very important here. He said, "What if on Tuesday something comes up?" Well. If you got into it with the right expectations, you would know like, well, okay, I probably won't have access to my jet because this just came up and I try to give them my schedule two weeks or a month ahead of time, if not more. You got to have a predictable schedule for this business model of putting it on a charter certificate to work. If you don't have that, you shouldn't do it. I agree with Fab. You should not do it. If you need it at a moment's notice on a regular basis, don't, don't, do, don't do the charter thing. Um, but there's options. So if you're working with an operator that's got other aircraft available... You might have access to those aircraft. Now, he said, well, they don't have access to it. Maybe maybe this is a, a, a holiday weekend or something that popped up. You, you last minute want to go on a holiday. Well, if they're a good operator, you know, they're going to have contacts and buddies. And they're going to try to find a way to get you where you need to go if you're working with a reputable operator. operator. If you're working with you know Joe Schmo Aviation, yeah, you might be out of luck. But this, again, goes to... It's not a problem with the business model. It's not a problem with the idea of, of buying a jet and putting it on charter. The problem here is you didn't know what to expect because you weren't working with a guide. You weren't working with the ultimate jet guide, someone that you know, like, and trust, uh, someone that could advise you what's going on and help you out, walk you through this. You know, and that's, that's what I'm here for. And that's what Fob does, you know, when, and he, he does a pitch later on in his video. Like, if you want to buy a jet, call me because I'll be your advisor. Well, if you want to charter, uh, put your aircraft on a charter certificate, call me. I want to help you out. I want to be your guide and tell you why you shouldn't do it. And if you're still going to do it, we're going to talk to multiple operators because I'm not behoven to uh, a single operator. So I'll, I'll we'll shop around different operators and find out the best one for you. 
you know, maybe it's not the guy that's based in the same state that you are. Maybe it's somebody that has a floating fleet on the other side of the country because he's running, you know, uh, Citation Excels. And, and, and that's the best fit for you for X, Y, and Z reasons because of the proposals that he gives you. Maybe it's PC-12s. Maybe it's not a jet. I want to help you out here. So, again, I don't think this is a, a situation where we're, the, the, the problem is the model. It's more of, you know, people are getting into this without an advisor. But if your airplane had been in the hangar, two things could have happened. One, Tuesday morning you jump in your plane and off you go. Or, even better, you know what? I'm going to get my plane to fly out Monday evening, pick the people up in Philadelphia and fly them to me for a meeting on Tuesday morning. This is great. I love this. I mean, this is exactly why you should buy a jet. Um, you know, it's it's that quantum economy that he talks about. It's a business flex. You know, you go get somebody. Yeah, it's a time machine. Love it. Now, how about that? How about that? What impact is that going to have on your potential deal now that you've sent your private jet out to pick them up and the private jet's maybe got your logo on the tail mm -hmm. or, or you've branded it inside. So you know, you've got cups with your name on it and all that kind of thing inside the airplane. That's one thing I will say um, is that if you're chartering an air, if you put your aircraft on a charter certificate, don't forget, like that's a lot of wear and tear on your asset. So when you go to buy, uh, sell it, um, the resale value might not be there. Um, People might ding it up. You know, kids are on there. They got crayons or whatever. I mean, the operator should do their best to keep everything clean. But it's a lot of wear and tear on your on your aircraft, so don't don't forget that. Um, you know, when you're when you're checking this stuff out. Yeah, the flight, flight attendants prepared some really good catering. That you, you brief <laughs> them on, you know, who these potential clients are and what they like and don't like. Whatever the jets are they're showing in here is hilarious. They like on board. So by the time they get to you, not only have they traveled on your private jet, in the comfort of the private jet, and <laughs> some good food, they see that it's your private jet. This is the way you do business. And you're obviously putting a lot of value on them because you, you're going through this expense of bringing them to you. It's a flex. You know, the odds of this still going. You can still send your, if it's, if it's on a charter, by the way, if it's on a charter certificate, you can still send the jet to go pick up your friends. That's still a play. And, you know, if you're working with a good operator, again, like they'll make this as customized as you want. Uh, in fact, if you're on an operator, one thing he doesn't talk about is that um, if you're if your plane's just part 91 use, like just for your own for your own personal use or your own business use, like it's only supposed to be used for business. But if you put it on a certificate, now you can rent it out to friends, uh, coworkers. Like there's, you almost have even more options because you're on a charter certificate of ways that you can uh, share the aircraft with more people than you could on a, uh, a Part 91 or private use. Go, you, you went to the quantum economy. You start doing things quantumly, okay? And it's not these linear steps, one, two, three, four. No, you're these quantum steps where it's two, four, that's enough of the charters yeah. don't try it is oh, going go. to make you money so just to recap here forget charters don't charter your jet out because you're not going to make any money out of it bear in mind you're also going to have wear and tear on the interior yep more hours Talking on the that. airplane so when you go and resell the airplane it's going to be worth less yep so is it really sure. worth it and if you calculate it's going to be worth less how many more hours you did and you do the maths after that you'll discover it's actually cost you money to charter the plane out instead of making you money. But if you use the airplane for your business deals, it's going to make you money. Instead of flying 600 hours a year, a lot would have been the charter. You may be through, through 350, okay? But they were all, you know, flying, you, your executives, your team, your family. Okay, let's be clear. It's it's what, what One thing that's kind of interesting about this is that he talks about if you charter, it'll cost you money, but if you buy it, it will only make you money. Um, he's he's conflating uh cost you money because you have to pay for the maintenance because you have to pay for the management fee that's why it costs you money and it's going to be worth less because you're using it a lot if you buy the airplane you still have to pay for the acquisition cost you still have to pay for management if it's a, if it's a larger aircraft you're going to want it managed um you're still going to have to pay for the maintenance so you're still it's still 
costing you money. Uh, it's not making you money. This idea of making money he, in one scenario, he says it doesn't make money because at the end of the day, the balance sheet doesn't give you a return on the investment. But over here, even though it doesn't give you a return on the investment, it's more like, you know, the, 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 the esoteric idea of it's making you money because it's helping your brand, it's helping your business, it's helping you go from point A to point B, you know, in a speedy manner and time is money, that kind of a thing. Uh, you can kind of see what I'm saying. Like all, all I'm trying to say is like, if you're interested in buying a private jet and putting it on a charter certificate, people have been doing this for decades. Some make money, most won't make money. That's, that's a reality, but they might offset their costs and that's enough. It's all about your expectations. It's all about understanding what you're getting yourself into. And that's exactly why I'm here. And that's, you know, I talked, I just kind of jokingly said, I, I wrote a book about it. Like literally one of the chapters in here is called, you know, should I invest uh, in a private jet? So I, I talk about, um, you know, how to buy a jet, how aviation works. You know, one of the chapters is, or how chartering works by itself. If you just want to start chartering. And one of the chapters, should I invest in a jet by buying one and put it on a certificate? I go through this. So you can check that out, you know, uh, at, uh, at the ultimate jet guide. Uh, dot com. I think I have it here. There you go. Boom. The ultimate jet guy.com. Uh, anyway, a huge shout out to Fab Holy. I hope one day we get a chance to do a video together. Would love to collaborate with him. He is a, a treasure in the aviation community. And I really appreciate the opportunity to kind of react. I think he got most of this right. I mean, I agree with him, you know, 90% for, for, for 90% of people that just Google invest in a private jet, make money, private jet, all that kind of stuff. And you probably see a bunch of my videos up there, uh, for the majority of people, like they shouldn't do it. And for the reasons that fab, uh, pointed out, but if for all those reasons you're still in, you still want to learn more. Well, I'm here to help. Um, uh, again, uh, uh, we, we, we walk through the process together. And I'm here to be uh, your, your ultimate jet guide. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to click the like button, comment below, subscribe to the channel, and we'll catch you later.